glad you're here today with open minds and open hearts to talk about some things that I know are really difficult to talk about. So we're going to talk a little bit about hospice, palliative care, um, advanced health care directives, and um, other you know, end-of-life planning topics. So let's just go back and do a little history here. Did anybody ever watch the show, Little House on the Prairie? Okay, that was my favorite show. So if you think of the turn of the century, Little House on the Prairie, um, you know, medicine in the end of the 1800s, beginning of the 1900s. Um, Dr. Baker, you remember Dr. Baker from Little House on the Prairie, right? He used to drive around in the little buggy and he had the brown bag. And, um, you know, he, would, he um, didn't have a lot to offer his patients in terms of cure. Dr. Baker's patients tended to die quickly of things like infections, um, childbirth, childhood illnesses. Dr. Baker's patients didn't tend to have long, drawn-out chronic illnesses as we do now. Um, Dr. Baker provided care for his patients, though. He provided comfort. He provided comfort through his presence, through being there with his patients through the night. He also provided comfort to his patients through opiates, wor which were available to Dr. Baker when other tools to provide cure were not available for him. Um, we've, we've changed a lot since then. You know, we've come a long way. We've got cures for things we never thought we would have cures for. You know, when I started nursing in the 1980s, I never thought that we'd see where we are now in medicine, and it's fantastic. Um, you know, people who are surviving serious heart attacks that wouldn't have survived in 1984 when I graduated from nursing. People are surviving from leukemias now that they wouldn't have survived in 1984 when I graduated from nursing. We've come a long <laughs> way. But one thing hasn't changed, and that's that people will die. We can't change that. But the good news is we can change how that death occurs. We can address the unique needs of the dying patient. We can address the things they need, like the comfort needs, the needs for managing pain and distressing symptoms. We can manage the psychosocial needs that those patients have, the spiritual needs, the emotional needs, and the needs that the caregivers have to provide them with support and care and education to take care of their loved one at this time. Seventy percent of people when asked say they'd like to die at home. The reality is more than 80 percent are dying in institutional settings. And this is in part has to do with just the challenges of logistics, you know, finding people to take care of their loved ones at home, being there for them. It also has to do with our current medical system. You know, we kind of have taken on this save lives at all costs mentality, and we don't ask people or offer choices all the time. Sometimes it's part of the society that we live in that we just don't talk about what we want. We don't talk about dying, so people don't know what that is. About 50% of patients who are dying were in pain more than half of the time. And one third of those who could benefit from hospice care actually receive it. And of those who receive hospice care, 30% nationally are on hospice care for less than a week. Now hopefully when I talk about hospice care, when I provide you with all the information, you all will say, one week is not nearly enough of that kind of care. So first we're going to talk about palliative care. This is kind of, um, it's the oldest kind of care there is. Palliative care means two E's. It's the basic tenet behind hospice care. It's care that is oriented towards providing comfort for patients. This is the care that Dr. Baker provided to his patients, predominantly. It was palliative care. 
Now, all hospice is palliative care, but not all palliative care is hospice. One of the newest areas of medicine is palliative care. Ironically, it's also one of the oldest. <laughs> um, but we're now seeing palliative care being offered in hospital settings. Um, and it was bringing the tenants of hospice care back into the aggressive care arena so that people who are diagnosed with serious illness can get the benefits of this type of care while they still pursue aggressive treatment or other things. The goal is to improve the quality of life for the patient and for the family. Um, the emphasis of care includes managing distressing symptoms, um, but also a big function of palliative care is to have conversations with patients and their families in terms of what are their goals and um, what is their prognosis and having some of those hard conversations um, around that illness. Often what the palliative care specialists are doing is taking all the information from all the different specialists involved in the care and trying to put it into a comprehensive set of information for that patient and that family to understand the disease. And then, based on that information, empower them to make decisions about their care. Um, I think every hospital in our immediate area now is offering some sort of palliative care. Um, but it's offered in a variety of different ways. Um, and, you know, it, many times it can be, it's a, just a physician service. Um, it can be a physician with nursing. Sometimes it's a nurse-directed service. It's very different in each of the hospitals. But, you know, it is available to most people um, in the hospitals in the Bay Area here. Now let's just talk about hospice. So as medicine progressed and we got into the 60s and we started really, you know, we had a, a, a new focus in medicine. And that was, our focus was towards curing, which was really good. But a woman named Cicely Saunders recognized that as we changed our focus, we weren't recognizing the unique needs of those who were dying. And what we do know is that someone who is dying has a different set of needs than someone who is, say, recovering from a stroke or is getting over a pneumonia or a heart attack, um, that the needs of the dying are different. And she recognizes, Dame Cicely Saunders recognized that the needs of the dying are different. And we, we had kind of left that behind in our pursuit of curing people. And so she developed a program called hospice, and this was back in the 60s. The first hospice program in this country was in 1974, I believe, and it actually became a Medicare benefit in 1984, I believe. So, you know, it's a relatively young program in Medicare's eyes. Hospice is a s very specialized form of care. It's intensive care directed at managing symptoms for patients who have a life-limiting prognosis. Some people say, well, you know, they have this, you know, you have aggressive care, which is curative care, and hospice care, which is comfort care. And I say, no, hospice care is aggressive care. We are aggressively managing the symptoms associated with a terminal illness. 